The Smart Health Facilities project was a £46 million seven-year project funded by the British government and implemented by the Pan American Health Organization in conjunction with the health ministries of seven Caribbean countries. This video will explain the project and what more could be done in the Caribbean or really in any region of the world to enable health facilities to provide quality services during and after severe storms or earthquakes. My name is Julian Murray and this short video is based on the external evaluation of the SMART project conducted by myself and by Dr. Jean-Luc Poncelet in the summer of 2022. Let us take a look at what SMART means. The SMART project was the culmination of several years of research and experimentation into how health facilities can be strengthened to withstand the effects of severe storms and floods. Importantly, a resilient facility is also better equipped to withstand other disaster events such as earthquakes, volcanoes, fires and pandemics. But the innovation of SMART was to move beyond safety, beyond physical strengthening and to add green components. By making health facilities green as well, they reduce their energy and water consumption, which helps both the environment and their ability to adapt to climate change. Another benefit of greening is that measures such as solar energy and rainwater harvesting can also reduce operating costs. The most important finding was that vulnerability of the target facilities was definitely reduced. Evidence from events such as Hurricane Irma in the British Virgin Islands, shown here in this video clip, the volcanic eruption in St. Vincent, and more recently Hurricane Lisa in Belize, all demonstrated that the smart facilities were able to withstand extreme events and resume operations after a very short period. A second key finding was that the innovation of adding green to safe provided multidimensional resilience, strength of the whole that is greater than the sum of its parts. This combination also had the very real advantage of bringing climate change funding to the health sector something that the Caribbean countries should note carefully since donors these days are making substantial climate change funding available more than they're making available for health. However, a third key finding is that despite the demonstrated successes of this project, governments in the region have been slow to adopt smart principles into their national policies and standards. The good news is that SMART principles have been adopted by various regional and global strategies and action plans, including at COP26 and in the 2019 Global Plan of Action on Climate Change and Health in Small Island Developing States. However, unfortunately, none of the seven governments in this project has yet adopted the SMART model policy or the SMART construction standards or has included targets for improving the resilience scores of their facilities in their health national adaptation plans to address climate change. In a standout example, where this has been done, in the British Virgin Islands, it's been very successful and spread to other sectors such as education and public storm shelters. A fourth finding the evaluation team is confident that the project represented very good value for money, although the financial benefits of more efficient energy and water systems were not easy to measure. The cost effectiveness of prevention is also well documented and the ability to save lives is always good value for money. And finally, perhaps this is the most important lesson for the seven governments in the region and also for anyone else considering further smart work, the evaluation team found that much, much more attention needs to be paid to operational maintenance. Both in the project design and implementation, but also by the governments themselves. 
The evaluation team extracted lessons learned that should be of interest to governments and other donors considering future smart work. Lesson number one, think about maintenance from the start. A hospital that is not maintained has higher operating costs and is less likely to remain functional after a disaster. It's vital to understand the costs and benefits of preventive maintenance, to understand how maintenance is managed in a country, and also to consider maintenance in site selection, in design choices, in negotiations with governments, and in financial planning. Lesson number two, focus on design quality. A hospital is complex. It will fail by its weakest component, which is often not visible. The design team must contain the full range of engineering skills and especially an expert in mechanical, electrical and plumbing. Stakeholders should ensure a quality design process. There should be genuine two-way consultations in each facility on local design preferences. Recruit quality designers rather than cheap designers. And finally, a key component of quality assurance is continuous review by external technical experts, known as check consultants, at all stages of design and implementation. Lesson number three, local is better and more sustainable. First, use local designers, contractors and suppliers as much as possible. They may sometimes need some support, but local partners provide more relevant and contextualized inputs, greater local ownership, and what they learn will remain in the community for future projects. Second, Implementing agencies should use procurement mechanisms and contracting templates that are widely used in the region. Lesson number four, empowering facility managers gives the highest return on safety and green investment. Agencies should use site level consultations to guide what should be included in the retrofit considering especially what improvements will enhance the overall work environment for staff and comfort of patients. Similarly, project decisions should be decentralized as much as possible to the country and local level. And finally, responsibility and resources for maintenance should be placed at facility level whenever possible. For our final lessons learned, here are some traps that agencies should avoid. First of all, do not cherry pick convenient or low cost components of the A70 package if you intend to be smart. Smart is the whole package. Secondly, vacate the facility during the upgrade unless there is absolutely no choice. And third, renovate the whole building. It is better for implementation and for overall reputation. In summary, the evaluation team found that the SMART project has demonstrated the effectiveness and the efficiency of undertaking a combined approach of safety and green in retrofits. The A70 standard is achievable at lower cost than new construction and should be the standard for each country and for the region. The concept is definitely ready to be scaled up in the region, in other sectors and indeed in other regions. However, more needs to be done in two key areas. Firstly, getting the smart principles formally into national policies, strategies and standards. And secondly, strengthening the systems of preventive maintenance throughout the region so that valuable infrastructure keeps its value and can continue to provide quality services to people before, during and after extreme weather events while also contributing to preventing climate change. The team hopes you have enjoyed this short video and if you want more information on this evaluation you can find the full evaluation report on the PAHO website. Thank you all.